Hello and welcome to the morning meeting, Building John Boy Media. My name is Jimmy. His name is Matthew, and we're talking about the company, some bullet points, uh, changes, development, stats. We got a new sport debut. We got a shirt that's hot in the streets, as Jake would say. Factor Inside of the Week, a bunch of questions from you guys. It's brought to you by Factor. If you want to ask questions next episode, leave them in the YouTube comments or underneath the Twitter uh, where we prompt people to ask questions and we'll get to them. If you enjoy the show, subscribe to the channel. That helps a whole bunch. We're going to get right into it. Maddie, how are you? Good. I watched UConn win last night. I assume you did not. I did not. I um. I wanted to, like, I feel bummed that I didn't, but I needed to catch up on sleep and the Yankees played a two hour game that started at six o'clock. So it ended at eight. So I was like, James, let's go, let's go to bed. And yeah. I fell asleep and I uh, actually got a decent amount of sleep. Nice. Did like, is this your family impacted here? Like, is there a group chat saying woohoo, UConn? No. That's what I figured. We're not Connecticut people. We're yeah. New Jersey people. Yeah. Um, My mom's a New York person, but yeah. Luke likes UConn. Because all his right. friends, he grew up in Connecticut, but he didn't start liking him until recently. I rooted for UConn uh, when I went to school in Connecticut. Kemba won, uh, and then Shabazz won. That was like our college years. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that was fun. Okay. Well. But yeah, I didn't watch. I wanted to. Didn't watch. Did not watch. One thing that you did watch was the Yankees home opener. Yeah, we went to the game. How was that? You had press access? We had media credentials, which was nice. Uh and yeah, I mean, we went and we like did a bunch of social content and posted from there. It was a kind of odd game. Like there was like no, it was tight, 0-0 zero, zero after six. And you thought it was going to be exciting. And then the Yankees kind of blew it in the top of the ninth, which made the bottom of the ninth less than exciting. But the stadium was loud. And like every time Stroman got out of the inning, it was a lot of energy. It was pretty cool. It was nice. Nice to see all the familiar faces behind the scenes. Because uh, everyone was there. Like the S crew was there. K was there. Rode the elevator down after the game with Kay. That Did he say nice. anything interesting? He said, I agree with your tweet. Why didn't they pinch hit for Trevino? Okay. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. They did nice. it there. So that was cool. Um, I won a ton of bets in a row because they had the the next Strowman pitch will be over or under 89 and a half miles per hour. And he didn't throw any pitches after the third inning over 89 and a half miles per hour. At all. Right. So we kept looking at each other like, what? And we just kept betting under, it. Under. Yeah. Like spamming it until then they finally changed it to 84 and a half. Right. But I think I got six in a row on that. I started putting $100 down. Because <laughs> it was like, well, it's not going to be faster. It hasn't been the whole time. Let's see how many times I did it. I did it. One, two, three, four, five times. Okay. The first time I bet, does it tell you? $26, 135. Like the odds weren't great, but it was a guaranteed win. Mm -hmm. And then I bet $25 and I won $9. In profit. Yeah, $36, 25 to 136. And then I bet $100, and I won $36, $136. And then I bet $100 again, I won $40. And then they changed the line. Right. Hey. But me and Ryan were just looking at each other like, what? Right. Chain, this is, we got it wrong. So that was cool. Okay. That was cool, yeah. I mean, you don't not like to see that. Um, no, but that's good. And you met up with Joe's there at some point? Met up with Joe's. Watched the game with Joe's. As soon as we sat down in the section, they lost the lead. So we were to blame. That was okay. a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people know the only time I've been to Yankee Stadium with Joe's, Astros no hitter. Ooh, that's not good. No. Um, yeah. And then the next year, I saw them get no hit through nine, and then they won that in extras. Regardless, in the Yankees' vein, uh, I saw people asking the – our new Talking Yanks voicemail episode, the first episode went out with BBD and Joe's. Yes. I saw somebody in the comments, maybe a few people asking, you know, is is this replacing the pregame show completely? Can you still do the pregame show in the postseason? Can you just talk to 
both the idea of the new show and then its implications with pregame show? Yeah, the new show, they kind of go hand in hand. The pregame show, you know, BBD was just doing them just because we had to do them. We sold them, but then you know, it's too much of a commitment for too little room for growth. There's certain people out there that get really upset we don't do them anymore, and I appreciate that they want and enjoy the content, but it juice is not worth the squeeze there at all uh, for us. They'll come back in the playoffs if they're in the playoffs for sure. Jake and I will do the pregame show in the same vein. Um, and then, and then, yeah, we appreciated everyone last year that like joined the pregame show and was on there. Kenobio Joe's BBD was the original three for the voicemail episode, but Kenobio left. So Rourke should sub in whenever he can, if he's around in the office, he should sit in and do that uh, and be on that show. But yeah, give Joe's BBD, give the audience more insight and like an, a call in show for everyone. I think it scratched a lot of like itches, if you want to speak, or like checked off a lot of boxes. Like, yeah, this works for the channel. So, but yeah, pregame show has a shelf life of three hours. Yeah, if that. If that. And you have to stay late to do it. Yep. And you, if they drop the lineup late, you're just sitting around for nothing. And now the shelf life is even shorter. Yeah. No, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. But it's for the postseason, it makes sense. And oh, yeah. Tons of sense. That's It'll be a lot of fun. Then, fingers crossed. Knock on wood. Seriously. So, yeah. That debuted. It'll be once a week. Call in. Ask questions. Yeah. It's supposed to have like a radio feel to it. Like just rapid fire. Questions, answers, question, answers. The callers are part of the show. That, that stuff. Sweet. Do you know the Talking Yanks number off the top of your head? No, I used to. Is it the same as it, it yeah, always was? it is. Uh, I, I mean, I never knew it, but BBD and Joe's both had it memorized, so that was impressive listening really? to that app. Yeah. Oh, well, I never called it, So, but it used to be on our 908-845-5792. Oh, yeah, Chad Green, um, mm. Maris Jeter is what I used to say. <laughs> but you didn't set it up for that. Like, you didn't choose the phone number. Right? No. Okay. They give you like five options when you set those up and then you can choose the one you like. Yeah. Nice. Well, another nice thing is Cushy Dreams. The best way to unwind. Cushy Dreams sponsors all of our John Boy Jake TV stuff and they're sponsoring this right now. They're the finest in illegal cannabis. The products, uh, that's products like smokable Delta 8, CBD flower and pre-rolls. They got some great gummies too. I indulge in those when we record the Watch and Guts or GeoGuessr a lot of the time. And I enjoy it. So go to CushyDreams.com. It's K-U-S-H-Y Dreams.com. And check out, uh, at checkout, use promo code JOMBOY, J-O-M-B-O-Y, for 25% off your next order. 25% off your 25% off and enter to win free stuff with promo code JOMBOY today. Cushy Dreams has been with us for a long time. They've almost become part of like the lexicon and like a word here, like are cushed up. Oh, I'm going to yeah. get cushy. And people just know what we're talking about in the comments or not comments. Like we'll, we'll have a ton of comments where... People will use the word cushy, not referencing an ad. That's it's kind of been sewn into the fabric of our community in a way. It has. Um, when you mentioned watching Guts, it made me think of that picture I sent yesterday. Oh, Did you see Olivia Rodrigo just riding the coattails of Guts. JJTV? Yeah, the Guts tour. Yep. I mean, we'll have to do our own in the future, and we'll make sure it's the right colors. Yeah. I mean, for ripping it off, she did a bad job at getting all the colors and everything right. So Yeah. Yeah, I just typed cushy into the JJTV comments, and it's just like a ton of people using it as a uh, adjective. Yeah, or a noun. Can really feel the cushy dreams doing their job. The cushy dreams really be hitting. <laughs> cushy dreams exclusive. That's funny. Um, let's hop over from JJTV to the warehouse because it was an exciting week in warehouse land. We had both the draft episode and, uh, game one of slap ball, uh, go out since the last time we sat down and game two goes out tonight as we record this, it'll be yesterday for those listening. So go watch that if you have not, but let's talk slap ball. Uh, you and Jack were the people that really invented yeah, I mean, at the end, everyone came together and like yeah. had a hand in it. But we, me and Jack texted 
uh, for a while back and forth about it. And we had all these big ideas that didn't happen. So then like we got to a point where we're like, all right, we just need to like do this in practice. But me, Jack and I don't have many text combos. That's just me and him personally. So I bet it, all of our texts are just about this. Yeah, they are. So we started July 1st. I started texting him and I would send him lines and bounce ideas. He makes up games for a living, basically. Mm-hmm. So um, there was a lot of concepts. I wanted the walls to be in play. Like you could bounce it off the wall. And that, if you caught it off the wall, that would be a free shot. Originally, we had giant gymnastic mats. Right, right. As part to of jump it. jump in. And like it was a moat and the only way you could shoot in that area was to be completely off the ground. And then you had to slap the ball in the air. Like you couldn't run and jump yourself. You would have to be no ball in hand, jump, and then catch a pass, throw it, or slap it before you landed on the mats. The mats are very expensive. We bought one kind Mm -hmm. of mat, but they were way too small. We need like the big ass three foot tall mats. Um, and then we were like, all right, let's scrap that. We got to figure it out else why, uh, another way. And then when like finding the ball was hard, like I have all these text messages of just like sending different types of balls. We bought a ton of balls and then like how I wanted the goals to be and the boards and all that. You finding the correct ball is in a vlog on this channel. I think on morning. Yeah. Um, because that's there's a target run in there. It's, I think it's the. Oh vlog. yeah, it's when I do my target run. Yeah, a day in the life of John Boy Warehouse edition. James is on the thumbnail, and yeah, you're in. You're in target. You got the ball, which I don't think was the goal of that trip. No, and then I hand it to Jack later on in that vlog, yeah. and I go, "This would work," and he touches it right away. He goes, "This is perfect." Yeah, and that's yep. the ball we use. Yeah, so we were trying, and then we had a ton of scrimmages, ton of practices because. There's so many elements that go into it. Like it needs the most fun version of the game is not the version we're playing. The most fun version to play is not the version we're making because the most fun version of the game would be a horrible watch for viewers. And by that you mean too many fast breaks too too much ball movement. Like it needed to be a possession and then possession game. And then some fast breaks because otherwise the camera's just whipping back and forth. You can't follow it. Uh, I think the best version of the sports that we make have kind of like slower, easier to follow moments and then individual moments, which we thought of like the freezes. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. There's a ton of rules. We would play games where a slap was worth two goals to see, to motivate people to slap. So then like, see, okay, can you score? Is it fun? Does it look cool? And then we did a version where, okay, now throwing is worth two and slapping is only worth one. And um, yeah, then no one slapped ever. It was just a perimeter game, throwing only. And the other way, everyone tried to slap and then it wasn't spread out. So then you know, we did so many tests. Um, the hardest thing was trying to get people to not play defense like basketball. Like some people were really basketball minded. So they were, you were there for all this. They would like body you up and touch you. And it's like, no, 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 there's no contact place. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, some plays would be really cool if you could run and slap. And like we did, a, had a lot of those in tryouts, but they just also lead to really dangerous plays, right? Yep. You were there for all of the... Yeah, I was there. From like the building it. Mm-hmm. We, I think we did pretty thorough testing. I, I think so. I mean, remember when the floor had that gap in between? Yeah, we did so many gap. versions of lines too. Mm-hmm. I actually think the lines look really cool the way they are. They are great. Like, I can't believe we never we didn't land on that first. Yeah. But yeah, there was a lot of different testing. And then I think that you've alluded to this too. The first two games, a lot half the people there are really learning how to play. Yeah. Uh, half the people were probably there for every test session. And then half of the people that are playing, this is their first, second, maybe third time of playing the game. And a lot of people break a rule and then they're like, that's stupid. It's like, well, yeah, that is like kind of fine. But if we allow that, it'll lead to people doing this. And that is really dangerous. And that's like where it all stems from. So once people played a bunch of games, I think they realized, oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, that would be scary. 
Yeah. That would be dangerous. The crease was a really late uh, inclusion. Yeah. Like really late. And then that changed the whole thing. Without the crease, it sucked. It's fun. The The numbers have been like really kind of surprising for me on game one. It's doing really well for it, a brand new game and Captain's League. Like if Captain's League continues at this pace, I'm very excited about that. Yeah, Captain's League game one. This is what I was telling Sam. Captain's League game one of ball and play. Obviously a sport that we've done before, um, but that really took off as well. That's sitting on 72,000 views. And the next most popular ball and play Captain's League is 45, one hit 50. Yeah, the first game always does way better. I expect it to not be this good, but I hope people tune in because I will say the first two games are versions of the game. Well, the first game was just a, kind of a blowout by Jake. Good job. Spoiler. Second game is me versus Jack. And it's an odd game. I, don't, I think it's the only game of its kind. And not and not really reflecting what the sport can be. Once people are listening to this, that game will have been out. So. Okay. Yeah, so it was just a lot of rule violations and not a lot of scoring. The next couple games get better. From game six on, I think it's incredible. I I agree. I think it gets so good. When I was making thumbnails, I go back and look at the box score, and I thought game two was a typo. It's so few goals, and I don't understand how. They just missed the net. Yeah. Every throw they had. They exactly. Like, but game game six, I think, is – and then the playoffs are, are – I watched game six, and I was – I was kind of like, fuck, this is cool. Like there's strategy, there's gameplay, there's like swings of uh, momentum and and like gaming the clock and using freezes. There's like a lot of cool elements. So if you haven't, you want to go check it in, just just be ready to bear with us. I, I can't even read the comments right now because it's all rule suggestions Uh-oh. when people have watched one game, which I, I love that they are a part of it and like they tune in and they're like really engaged, but it's like, you guys, come on, you haven't even seen multiple versions yet. Wait up. Yeah. And then there's rules that the, that the people just aren't going to agree with, but like it's just safety. Um, behind the scenes, if people want to know that thumbnail number one, did you notice Rob Sirocco's faces all screwed up? No. He was looking away from the ball. Like his eyes were making it their way up to Jake when we took this screenshot. So I just used Photoshop generative AI on Rob's face and just kept clicking it until his eyes looked at the ball. There was one that they, again, were looking away, and it looked really like Rob. Oh, this my God, one, I just zoomed in on it. Yeah, this one doesn't look like him at all. I sent it to him, and he said, did you put makeup on me? Like, why? <laughs> but it's that was the only time Photoshop gave me one where he's looking straight ahead. That's funny. I also I'm excited because Captain's League this Thursday, we have a practice for the next one, and the draft is really fun. And if people enjoy the league and we do well, like it can get so much more fun Mm -hmm. if we continue it. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. The drafts are, that's when it gets buzzing in here. The office just talks about the draft. Yeah. Well, this Thursday we're doing like tryouts for Blitzball basically. And do you want to reveal how Blitzball works? Because I don't even think I know in full. It's like, you don't have to play every position. Uh, Three of your four players will hit three of your four players will field three of your four players can pitch so you basically you, every game you submit a lineup and it gotcha. says you know hey one of one person can be an all-rounder they can field hit and pitch then you're going to have another person that is they're just going to field and hit they're just going to pitch and hit they're just going to pitch and field okay cool so you kind of have to draft that way yeah you have to draft with a very clear strategy yeah um all right Cool. Well, let's move on. Um, Wheels are turning on that now. Well, don't let them turn too much because we got to talk about the dog shirts. Um, Ever since the Yankees started the dog stuff, we've made four shirts and all four shirts have been fairly successful, which is cool. Yeah. The merch store is going to blow up this year. If the Yankees are good, Mm -hmm. we have uh, the team is like in full swing and, and Sarah like cranked out those shirts right after like as they're happening 
the Yankees asked for them, so we sent them a whole box. So maybe they'll be wearing them. I don't know. We've sent them some before, and they never actually get worn. But fingers crossed. It'd be really cool. Sometimes they have. But, yeah, it's uh, we're in a good rhythm there with the merch. Like, pretty cool. I think if the Yankees are good, we'll do good. And then, you know, even with other teams and stuff jumping on memes and inside joke shirts, I always think we'll do really well. For sure. No, I'm, I was happy to see. Plus, being a Drake and Migos fan, the two shirts that are album covers were nice to see. Mm. Did you know that that's what that was? I knew the Drake one, but I couldn't tell you which one is the Drake. Oh, the For All the Dogs, the music one. Mm-hmm. And then Migos, I don't know. Migos album covers all the way on the left. It's cool. Yeah, sure. I didn't know that stuff. See, normally you stump me with music on this show, but look at that. It's true. Um. All right, before we get to the factor insight of the week and the questions that we will be answering, I just wanted to touch base on the shorts incentive program that we first talked about last week. Um, just how the first week of it went, the learnings that we did learn, uh, which with YouTube shorts, they tend to take longer than a week to pop off. So it's not like we're seeing crazy results right away, but I do think that there are good signs, um, good signs for a a positive in the future. Yeah. I mean, it's just been fun and they're supposed to be really light lift. So I hope there's not like, uh, they're not burdening anyone, but I think we made 80 shorts. The content report said 80 shorts that diversa sent out. Probably counting Noah's clips as well. Counting the normal amount. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's awesome. Let me see if I can find that. And they've been fun. And I just enjoy seeing the multiple different types of creative that we have going on and then seeing what will work. Like, uh, you know, we've been making them for Talking Yanks and JM Baseball. And there's certain formats that have worked better than others. But even uh, Zach did an edit on a Talking Yanks award from an old one that we repurposed. And the style in which he did it, I think, is like, oh, we should do new awards in this style. I think that's really engaging, having a word-by-word reveal. So I can share that now with um, Andrew and Max and BBD in the future. So, like, I just – that's where I think the wins are coming. It's not even really – you know, that that short didn't do great or maybe that repurposing old – old awards isn't going to be the winner, but by just throwing Zach's creative into the mix, we get like a a fresh way to do it. That's good. So, and there's been a lot of that across the board. I just think it's really cool when everyone's working on the same task and like all the create, the whole creative uh, side of the house is kind of working together to figure shit out. For sure. No, it's really cool. I like seeing all of the, I watch all of them when they get put into the Slack channel. Yeah. They're very fun to watch. Number of original, not repurposed shorts for the last few reports. So the week of February 12th to 25th, or two weeks, whatever that is, there was 14 original made. February 26th to March 10th, there was 24. March 11th to March 24th, there was 50. And then last week, or two weeks, March 25th to April 7th, there was 85 original. Awesome. Yeah, it's really good. And some are doing well, but like it, it's it's not going to be instant that we have uh, them just like, you know, crank out. But I do believe some are doing pretty well, which is exciting. I think Ryan has the one doing the best right now, the Corbin Carroll one. Yep. Um, oh, it's going to be at 100K soon. Yeah. So he's in the money. Congrats, Ryan. A free lunch. Probably. Yeah, around there. Keep going, though. It'll be more fun. But that's cool to see, you know, in week one, we got one that reached that milestone. And then we just got to keep climbing up. And I think we're going to keep testing new stuff and keep, uh, like, next week we have a different style of test where we're not going to post any of the repurposed clips on YouTube, just original, and see if that helps, which I think it will. But I don't know. It could be wrong. I think it will definitely help. Yeah. Because if that helps, then we just need to prepare everything to be able to handle that in the future. Yeah. Yeah. That if that is the case and we see we're going to do it on Jam Baseball and not posting podcast clips and only posting these original ideas works well. Great. Let's try it on Talking Yanks and on Talking Yanks. We'll only post original and uh, the Boone clips maybe because a few of those pop off. But yeah, like you're saying, if that happens, it would basically be making 
more, a second schedule for all of the channels, like short schedule. And we'd have to like really tie ourselves to recording sessions and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, it can work. My, my ring's going to break. Just let you know, there's a, there's a rip in this ring. Yep. And it's going to break at some point. I'm going to have to buy 10 more now. I buy a bag of 10. I think I'm out. You're out. Well, the dogs eat them. James loves playing with them. Yep. Um, so I got to buy more. I did another deep dive today for uh, Jimmy's Three Things. Yeah. Another one that I enjoyed doing. So hopefully people enjoy it. I don't think it's going to be as fun as the Mets one was last week, but it should be good. And um, I'm hungry, so let's get to the factor question of the week. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like calorie, smart, keto, protein plus, or vegan and veggie. I don't know if that's my popular options. But I, like, <laughs> I like some of the meals a, a whole bunch. Uh, discover more than 60 add-ons every week, breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. So head to factormeals.com slash more John boy 50 and use code more John boy, more John boy 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box, 50 off your first 20 off your next. That's code more John boy 50 at factormeals.com slash more John boy 50, 50 off your first box, 20 off your next, which question is the number three. Number three is the factor question of the week. Do you have a favorite breakdown or lip read? Honestly, my favorite is the San Jose Sharks manager getting tossed and arguing with the refs. Matthew Cross, born in the year 8306, said, I don't have a favorite. I don't even know. I've made a thousand. More. More than a thousand? Probably. Um, Are there ones that come to your mind when you think about a favorite? No. Um, a favorite. The next one. The next one. No, I don't know. I mean, there's like little moments, I think, that are funny. There's the umpire, the the AAA manager who uh, he's like does the like the fake double take. Oh, I don't even know what I said. Right after he gets ejected, that's really funny. Pat Kelly is the uh, manager's name of the St. Louis Bats or something like that. I forget. Uh, That was a funny one. Um, I don't know. It's more like I I remember like edits I did, not like the actual video. Like the Scherzer sticky stuff one, I patched together like four clips and replays. So I had a a straight shot of um, Scherzer. And then I did like a very dramatic started wide and he was like, sticky stuff and sweat. Sticky stuff, sticky stuff and sweat. Sticky stuff and sweat. Or whatever he was saying. It's just sweat and rosin. Sweat and rosin. Sweat and rosin. And I slow punched the whole thing, like cinematically, until we were like at a tight close up. And I really enjoyed that. Um, but any from, like, there's some that, like, you know, Ryan is repurposing a lot on my Instagram right now. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't remember many of them i don't know if i have a favorite do you is there like an old yankees one that you really like like if it's guardy banging or cc uh probably like a walk-off celebration Mm. maybe i would like those i don't i don't know they're with me for a day yeah and they're gone and then like people view them i think sometimes multiple times and they're with them more so um, you know what my like most proud of one would be when the Yankees uh got a tip on that pitcher, mm-hmm. the that, White Sox guy. Yeah, the White Sox pitcher and the Yankees had a uh they picked up on a tip because um no one else had that. I just something I noticed. Or there was another one where Rizzo uh, hit three home runs in a game and he was moving. He changed where he stood. And that was just something I noticed that I went and did. But that. Yeah, I'd probably say that Yankees tip one would be the one I would share with people and say, is it, this, this is something I found that's cool. That is cool. 
and it like popped off right like i think it did really well yeah and to the extent where the like white Sox guy saw it yeah they yeah everyone talked about it they like it they got asked questions about it after that Mm -hmm. so yeah i think that i think i'd go with that one cool i probably don't remember more than i remember though yogi berra um the other questions of this week, there are seven of them, and we will dive through them quickly. A reminder to leave any questions that you have in the comments below, and we might get to them next week. Uh, return listener and question asker Seth Gill uh, asked how YouTube chapters are made. This is a quick one to answer. The chapters are not auto-generated. Uh, we manually plug them in. So... Um, when editing, you note down the timestamps of the different chapters that you want to make. Uh, Rob is doing that as we speak. And then we we'll just manually paste them into the YouTube description. And then YouTube makes the chapters if you have that timestamp list. Yeah, all you do is you put zero, zero, semicolon, zero, five. And then you type out the words. And then that's what the chapter at five seconds is. Yep. Pretty simple. It's a really nice feature, though. It's a really nice feature. Yeah. Uh, how do you view them with watch time and views? I think they help a ton because instead of clicking off the video, when you're done hearing what you know, you get to see what's coming up and something might pique your interest later on. So then you could click to that and stay on. Whereas if you're watching a whole, you're watching this show and you get bored of what we're saying right now, you might take your cursor and just like look at what's coming up next and find a different topic. Instead yep. of just clicking away because you have no idea. Yep. Uh, ben Meyer asked if Marshall will be in future warehouse game events. Don't know. He's not in the plans for any right now. Uh, that was a stand-in for Shelfie, who's on Rotten moving forward with Trev for the rest of the warehouse cup. Um, so no plans for the rest of this year, but I'm not going to say no if he wants to come back and there's a spot. Love to have him. Jake Goldstein, speaking of the warehouse, asked, who made the theme music for Blitzball and did we commission it? Mikey Rotano, who works for us now, didn't at the time. Yep. Created that. He also has the intro for Talking Baseball, Shea Station. Any other shows? Baseball Today, maybe? In After Hours, he's been chopping it up with We Got Ice. Doing all their songs, yeah. Is that the, is that the Blitzball? I really like it, the Blitzball theme. Yeah, I can do it when I edit it and look at it. <laughs> um, a question about three things. Would a series like that ever come to the Talking Yanks channel for specific Yankee insights and deep dives coming from Nicholas Rizzi? Mm. Zoe liked this question and texted it to me. But I kind of do deep dives on Talking Yanks, the podcast, where because it's only one team that allows it more. Whereas um, I'm talking baseball like it goes too quick. You can't stop and spend that much time on one thing. We're talking Yanks. I'll do awards and I'll like throw a bunch of stats and numbers out there and like research I've done I'll, I'll quite often. It's a different format because I'm talking to Jake and not my computer. But I don't know. There's probably too much to add to my plate now. But if the off chance I find something and I just want to do it, I can. Jimmy's one thing maybe. But no plans, but I wouldn't say it can't happen. That makes like if sense. it's a postseason run, that would be good supplemental content for there as well, if I could. Yeah. Okay, cool. My stomach just rumbled so loud that the mic might have picked that up. Mm. That was insane. Brought to you by Factor. Um, three more questions here this week. Um, tell her, Jake. Tell her, Jake asked uh, that he's been curious what happened to sequence with Trevor Plouffe. I was a fan of those videos. Yeah. Sequence was pretty cool. It was good insight, but it mm -hmm. wasn't um, never really found. It's like footing or cadence or rhythm and a lot of good shows kind of have to get like moved on or paused and keep going. But there were some hits. I think we couldn't figure out how to get it consistent and Trev uh, moved on to do baseball today and mm -hmm. was doing a ton of other uh, good stuff and went on to do talking baseball three times a week instead of he was doing it twice, I think, at that point. So, um, again, like it could come back if we figured it out, had a different home for it, but I think we just really weren't 
aware we didn't have the insights into how youtube worked into how you know having a your own channel or not a channel or whatever interview versus this or what's good or what's bad so um got paused but I, ultimately i don't think it had the consistent views i think it should have or could have but maybe it was on us that we didn't promote it or dish it out correctly i don't know a lot of stuff comes and goes though i'll never forget when we we're in the Bronx and we did those like before baseball season meetings, like yeah. at Billy's Dan Rourke said, uh, his like proudest thing was that, uh, episode of sequence was the most viewed thing on chain baseball. And it was for like a very long time. There was like a 90 plus thousand view sequence, but like you're saying, it just wasn't consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Dan Rourke being the editor at the time. All right. Uh, sorry, I can't read this. Bayer Boy? Yeah. Bayer, Bayer Boy 89 said a question for you, Jimmy. Do you ever get the chance or have the time to watch slash listen to other content from Jam Channels? I know you're super busy with family and the shows you are on, so I'm curious if you get the chance. No, not as much. I mean, I tune in here and there, but not like all the time. If there's a new show that's coming out or people want help or like feedback, which I feel like I would love to be utilized like more in that role, but I, I, and, and try to reach out. Um, but I, I mean, it's impossible to watch everything. Maybe some of you guys do it, but yeah, when you start creating your, you, your input time is less. And then um, if I'm on a trainer, like commuting, I'll throw on baseball today or whatever new show is coming out. If the Giants have a big win, I'll tune in. Um, so kind of like I try to pick and choose here and there to tune in and and see what I listen to what I can. But it is hard because we were, I put out um, 40 things a week, so I'm creating a lot. Like I don't get to input that much at all. When I worked a 9 to 5, I f from the, the moment I sat down to the moment I left, I was had a show on in the background or a podcast in my ears. I would listen to so much shit. And now it's just nothing. Me too. I never missed a talking Yanks or talking baseball before. Um, last question of the episode comes from good friend Brian Feingold. It was a pleasure seeing you at Trivia last week, Brian. He said, did we talk about Trivia, the event? No, I don't think so. But I heard it went really well. I was upset I couldn't go. We might have done it last week. Oh, it yeah, did, we did. It, we yeah. opened up with it. It was yeah, right yeah. after. Yeah, 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 we did. Brian asked, uh, how much did the monetary aspect play into the growth of the warehouse channel initially? I remember you had opportunities for subs to win gift cards and such, or just subscribing and commenting. Do you think that played a role? Would it work with other channels? No, I don't think that helped. I think the only reason it helped was it gave us a way to say subscribe without feeling um, annoying because it was a subscriber giveaway, which then reminded people to subscribe. So that helped. If we just had an ad read that said subscribe, I think it would be the same thing. I don't, people, don't think people were subscribing for the giveaway that much. Because uh, in comparison to how much did having the short form clips take off help, it's maybe, I don't know, 100 to 1. Yeah. Like, if that ratio makes sense at all. So no. Um, and I don't even think that's a good way to grow a channel unless you're... Unless that's the viewers you want in a way. I don't want someone just to subscribe because they're trying to win a prize. Like them to subscribe yeah. because they want to come back for the content and then they enjoy it and they want to stick around. Makes sense to me. Yeah. That's the app. Thank you guys. See you later. Go the breakdowns. Slap ball.